Okay, what up ladies and gents, it's your favorite Asian robot right here. Okay, hopefully your favorite official content creator for the first ascendant. Now, I hope you didn't miss me too much this morning, but today what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through all of Glaze's transcendent modules and show you what they do. So we are going to go straight into the laboratory, all right? I've already set up a free descendant module uh, space here. It was my sanctification build, but I'll just rebuild that later. And we'll go through all of the different transcendent modules for Glay and Ultimate Glay. All right. So let's go see what these bad boys can do. Off we go into the laboratory. Look at those people surrounding me. Catch you later. <laughs> anyway, for those of you that enjoy my content, don't forget to register as a supporter. Okay, link is in the video description, especially if you find my information helpful. Let's get started with this test. Now, I did do this before for Lepic, um, but Glay is next on the release list. I know you guys, some of you guys have been waiting for my builds. Um, Glay is next on the release list, and so I figured I should do one for Glay. Okay, let's get... I always say let's get started, but I really want to say let's begin. Then it got caught halfway and just gets, and it just ended up as let's get. But anyway, <laughs> let's get started. Okay, I'm going to remove my cam for this. I'll begin with the, uh, and as you know from the Lepic build video, it doesn't really matter whether something is fully upgraded or not upgraded. Let me just give you a quick demonstration. Blood and Iron, fully upgraded. All right, it changes this to the blood. It changes her passive to Blood and Iron, just as an example, right? Chance to crit, uh, chance on critical hit, 30%. If we take an unupgraded Blood and Iron, same thing. This doesn't change at all. As you can see, the description has not changed. So upgrading a transcendent module does not change its effect. Okay, I hope you guys remember that. Now, let's get started with the first one. We're going to talk about Super Senses first. Super Senses affects her third ability, okay? So without Super Senses, this is called Increase Sensory. If you transform it to Super Senses, what will happen is that your lethality and your maximized recovery will have a greatly increased duration. But Super Senses will cause your fire rate to become fixed. If you look here at Super Senses, take note that although the duration, the base duration is 8 seconds, all right, the fixed fire rate is 48 rounds per minute, which is a huge decrease. If we take off Super Senses and we look at Increased Sensory, Increased Sensory lasts 5 seconds at base, all right? The decreases in terms of running speed and sprint speed and all that are the same, but there's no fixed fire rate, okay? What exactly does a fixed fire rate mean? Well, I think it's best to demonstrate this one with an actual, you know, demonstrate this one with an actual demonstration. God, what is my inability to talk today? Okay, so when you're in a frenzied state and you use your increased sensory, Glay does not consume ammo when firing. This lasts for five seconds, and there you go. This is what it feels like, all right? This is what it feels like normally. Now let's put on super senses and see how that changes. So if we put on Super Senses, okay, take note that there's the only change for the maximized recovery is the increased base duration, all right? Without this, uh, the, the base duration, the running speed is 30%, sprint speed 30%, all that kind of stuff. Base duration, oh, wait, the base duration is 10 seconds. Sorry, I was incorrect on that. The base duration stays the same. Only lethality changes with Super Senses, as far as I'm, if I'm not wrong, let me just double check that. Yeah, only lethality changes. Sorry, I was incorrect on that. The only change is to the base duration of lethality, which becomes 8 seconds. But once you put Super Senses on, the fire rate is fixed, as I mentioned. So, uh, once again, apologies for that. I swear it changed that. I swear it changed the other effect, Maximize Recovery, but I guess it didn't. Okay, with Super Senses, coming back to that. This is what your fire rate becomes. This is how bad your fire rate is with Super Senses. It doesn't matter that it lasts double the duration. You're not gonna fire it. you're not gonna fire very much because your fire rate becomes fixed and fire rate is a key part of dealing damage. Besides, it is way better to increase duration with modules than anything else. So super senses in my books is one of the trap transcendent modules. That said, it can be used for Glay and Ultimate Glay. Um if your weapon, alright, has a fire rate that is somehow lower than what is displayed here then you will actually get an increase because the fixed fire rate goes both ways. Uh, funnily enough, there is a technically a use for super senses. If you can find a weapon that has a fire rate lower than 48 rounds per minute, you can actually get that weapon to fire at 48 rounds per minute. But again, it's pretty slow, so unless it's a very high value weapon, 
you're not going to get a lot of power out of this. However, it can be used for, like, um, certain full-on sniper builds, things like that. I mean, it's really up to you. Uh, I generally don't prefer it, but some people have found some clever ways to use it still. Even, even though those methodologies are clever, I don't find them good, in my personal opinion. You may have a different opinion, all right? If you have a way of using Super Senses, by all means, go crazy, all right? Go crazy with it. All right, that's Super Senses covered. Now, let's talk about the next one on the list. The next one on the list is, a, now I'll save the big, the big three for later, but the next one on the list that is not used very often is Explosive Life. This one is not used at all because although it was potentially used for mobbing, um, the big problem with Explosive Life is that you actually have to defeat enemies first and they have to spawn the Life Orb first before this is used. So that quickly went sideways because it, it was just a slower version of mobbing with mass sanctification. So a lot of people didn't use this. However, if you enjoy playing the Necromancer class in other video games, then this explosive life is basically corpse explosion. That That's literally what it is. I cannot demonstrate it in the lab, but I'll read it for you and I'll show you all the changes, but it's basically corpse explosion. So let's get started. Okay, without explosive life, what you need to understand is that life siphon, it will cost you three power of life. You cannot use it without power of life, okay? And it will affect enemies within a six meter radius around you. All right, it's got a skill power baseline of 327.5% modifier, okay? Um, and you will recover 5% of your max hit points per enemy hit within the radius. You can expand this radius up to 300%, which means it can go up to 18 meters. Now, in a frenzied state, the modifier goes from 327.5% to 467.7%, and it will deal more damage, all right, um, based on how much of your hit points is gone. Um, what I have to say about that, though, is that this is not really great power because it requires power of life to even be cast in the first place. Now, um, in your non-frenzied... That's for your frenzied state. In your non-frenzied state, you will basically have a 12-second damage reduction and you will gain vigor in proportion to the number of enemies hit. However, in, even in the non-frenzied state, it will still deal damage, all right? Let's uh, demonstrate Life Siphon first before we do anything else. So if we use the Supply Drone here, we get full resources. Okay, let's go summon a Valgi. We'll put him max level just for giggles. He's invulnerable. Okay, spawn one. All right. First, we will demonstrate in frenzied state. Bang. Okay, it hits this guy. Even in non-frenzied state... Oh, Lord. Sorry, the cooldown is hella long. So, in a non-frenzied state, like so, it will still deal damage, but less. All right? Frenzied state deals slightly more. Now, in order to demonstrate this next part, let's use up the power of life. Okay, the power of life is gone now. When you have no power of life, you cannot actually cast Life Siphon. This will become important later on because... Mass Sanctification allows you to cast it no matter whether you have Power of Life or not. As you can see, no skill resources. You can see that I'm tapping the button. No cast, okay? So this is the basic version of Life Siphon. Now, let's go put on um, Explosive Life, all right? Now, again, we cannot demonstrate Explosive Life because although it will cost less, now it only costs two Power of Life to cast this. It requires a, it requires a Life Orb to be on the ground before it does anything. Now, it will explode the life orb whether you are in frenzied or non-frenzied state, but you will deal almost double damage in frenzied state as compared to non-frenzied state, all right? Um, the other thing is to note that the damage range, as far as I know, is referring to the radius of the explosion around the life orb. So th that was the good thing about this. You can expand the damage range from the explosion of the life orb but you don't need to be that close to trigger it. As far as I know, it will trigger on any life orb that is within, within that you can reasonably see. All right, that should be the range limit. I could be wrong on that. Again, I've never really used this actively in the field. I tried it once, didn't like it, and immediately went to mass sanctification. All right, although I cannot demonstrate this here though, there is one other effect. Your passive will have a spawn rate for life spheres of 40% and the life spheres last for nine, uh, eight seconds, okay? Without this, the life sphere still lasts 8 seconds, 
but the spawn rate is only 30%. So if you read the description of Explosive Life, it slightly increases the spawn rate of Life Spheres, all right? Let's put it on and then we'll try again. Now we'll just use this to get full uh, resources. Take note that I cannot cast it because there are no life orbs. Again, this comes back to what I was telling you guys before. You need life orbs first in order to cast this. And therefore, it's not really considered a useful skill because you have to kill the target first and then use it. So unless you really want to role play as a necromancer uh, doing corpse explosion, this is probably not the best skill to be using. So that's why a lot of people don't use explosive life. Okay, that's settled. Now, demonic modification. Okay, this one is wild. Under normal circumstances, right, you have your skill called Massacre. Massacre will cause Glade to equip her unique weapon. The number of bullets is affected by the amount of power of life, all right? So you get one bullet per power of life. And in a frenzied state, you will deal additional damage, which will be non-attribute damage, all right? And it will also increase as your health decreases. Um, that is supposedly, <laughs> excuse me, what this does. Now... <laughs> The thing is that when you use Demonic Modification, that'll change everything quite a bit. But let me at least demonstrate how this works, okay? So under normal circumstances, replenish supplies. Let's go Masker Mode. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Like that, okay? Alright. Now you understand how the normal thing works. Let's put on Demonic Modification. Demonic Modification will cause your Massacre to have a fixed fire rate and it will consume HP based on the duration of True Aim. Bullets will deal additional damage proportional to the HP consumed and attacking weak points increases the chance of HP recovery. If you now look at... Sorry, let me save this first. It will now modify this to Demonic Modification. Okay, the cooldown of the skill is 2 seconds. The True Aim HP cost is max... HP is 1% per 0 0.1 seconds. So you can hold this for up to um, 10 would be 1 second. So you could hold this for up to 9.9 .9 seconds. Right? Now, the damage will be the same as your equipped weapon. The skill power will be multiplied based on how long you focused. All right, And you get a stack every 0 0.1 seconds. Now, the base HP recovery chance for a weak point attack is about 20%, and the additional HP recovery chance per stack of focus is 1% uh, per 0 0.1 seconds, okay? And the maximum amount of HP that you can recover is 20%, okay? Max HP times 20%. In Frenzied State, you deal quite a bit more. So how is this actually used? Well, it's probably best if I demonstrate. This thing, okay... We'll transform it into Massacre. Take note that it doesn't... It's, uh... This this version is a hand cannon. Alright? It doesn't consume anything until you aim down sights. When you're aiming down sights, take note. It'll empower your gun to, a ver to various stages, just like that. Alright? And you can see the meter of how much it is empowered. And it can basically dish out a whole bunch of extra damage. Now, this is in... That was in non-frenzied state. Okay? Let me, let me show it to you in a frenzied state. If I go into a frenzied state, the damage is even higher, which is really nice. Okay, gather the power first. And once it hits close to maximum, all right, you can use it like this. This can be used for very, very big hits. So if you want to go Masker Glay, you can kind of do it like this. But you need a different way of um, gathering hit points first. So there are ways to build it around this. But the other problem is that how are you going to gain the power of life? Because the only uh, easy and cheesy ways to gain power of life would be mass sanctification or blood and iron. And you cannot equip them at the same time as demonic modification. So although there was a lot of hype around this initially... Uh, like I said, it really doesn't it really doesn't help much. So most of the time people who try this will struggle to gain power of life and they only become useful toward the end of the boss fight. Somewhat okay in, in certain team fights, but I would not use it at all. Okay? So that is the shortcoming of demonic modification because Glay is basically limited by the power of life that she needs. So although this thing is pretty cool, 
Um, that's all it is. Cool. It's not actually useful in the field. All right. So that covers the three of these that are not normally used. Now, let's talk about the three that are normally used. I'm going to remove my cam for this one because the demonstrations are a lot hotter and a lot better. Okay, mass sanctification. This thing is the best of 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 the best. All right, everybody uses this. Why? Why is this so good? Take a look at what happens when we equip massive sanctification. First of all, your your second skill, all right, no longer has a power of life cost. Instead, when you are in a frenzied state, you gain three power of life every time you cast this, and it will just cost you 15% of your max hit points. The radius is 12 meters. So if you've seen my farming build, you can pump up this radius and the, of course, um, the, what you call it? The improved variant of the farming build pumps that up even higher. So uh, you can get some insane range on this. I think I was hitting something like 34 meters. It's pretty ridiculous. Um, but yes, you can do some shenanigans with this. So Massive Sanctification is my favorite Transcendent module. I absolutely love this. All right. I had Blood and Iron before because with Massacre Glade beforehand, uh, I couldn't fit in all the points I wanted while still having a farming build. Now, Blood and Iron is kind of dropped. People only use Predator Instinct and Massive Sanctification. Predator Instinct, I'll go through in a little while, okay? Because that one is quite complex. But for Massive Sanctification, this is the holy grail of playing Glade, all right? What Massive Sanctification does is that in a non-frenzied state, all right, you will basically be able to... No, sorry. If, you, if the enemy is within radius, you'll be able to drain hit points from them and heal yourself, as you can see, okay? In a frenzied state, you will hit them for damage, and that's what you'll do. Now, I'm going to demonstrate this really quickly, because again, I can't really do this without cooldown mods. But to keep the test fair, I'm not going to equip any other mods. Just bear with me for a second, once it cools down. Okay, when it comes to Massive Sanctification... It's got a fairly long cooldown of 20 seconds, which is why the um, farming build works the way it does. But when you trigger this, you automatically gain three power of life. Here's one more little thing. All right, here's one more little thing. Um, please bear with me as I do this. Okay, I'm going to go out of range of the enemy. But did you know that even if you don't hit anything, you still gain three power of life? Which means that for Massacre Glaze now... You only need three power of life to trigger your massacre, and then you can have, um, you can turn on increased sensory to basically shoot your massacre as much as you want. You guys know about this combination, right? Okay, so with massive sanctification, you can now do that right at the start of the boss battle. There is no reason for you to use blood and iron and slowly build up the power of life, so that's not necessary anymore. This is why massive sanctification is so good, all right? Going over the skills again. Like I mentioned, you gain 3 power of life anytime you cast. It does more damage the lower your hit points, okay? Your <laughs> skill power is lowered. So if you take this off, your base skill power in Frenzied State is 4, 6, 7. When you put Massive Sanctification on, your base skill power drops to 2, 3, 0. So your damage is a lot weaker. But even though your damage is a lot weaker, the huge radius means that you can bleed the whole map like some kind of vampire queen and that's why i love massive sanctification all right it alters your number two ability and makes it super useful oh by the way in a non-frenzied state you will basically absorb life from enemies and um when in basically if you read the description when in a non-frenzied state it recovers hp proportionally to the number of enemies within range and absorbs life spheres any life spheres lying around that exist within the effects range so after you've completely butchered your opponents with the combat version, what you can do is you can swap back to the non-frenzied state, pull in all the healing, and then swap back into the frenzied state. That's how a lot of people use this. Um, I know there are some tricks around this, but I refuse to show that because those tricks could be considered dishonorable since it's not really the intention of the skill. There are two different states, two different intended effects, and I play the game that way. Okay? So that is done. All right. Blood and Iron. Very simple, very straightforward. What Blood and Iron does is that it changes Glaze passive. Glaze no longer generates power of life spheres. Okay? So, taking this off, look. She can spawn a um, life sphere. And in a non-frenzied state, she gets damage reduction from this. Alright? Um, 
Defeated enemies will have a chance to drop a life sphere at a 30% spawn rate. Each life sphere can recover you for 4% of your maximum health and gives you one power of life and the duration of each life sphere is about 8 seconds baseline. Okay? When you equip blood and iron, this changes. No more life spheres. But whenever your firearm deals a critical hit, you will increase your power of life. However, this effect has a 5 second cooldown. Which is why a lot of people don't like it. The 5 second cooldown, cool as it is, okay, <laughs> um, unfortunately is not very good because it means that you cannot rapidly gain power of life unless you have enough cooldown reduction. So in the past, we would sort of bear with the cooldown and we would use this because it was one of the easiest ways that you could gain power of life. Let me very quickly demonstrate by... Oh my god, I did not clear my inventory. Ew. Okay, wait a second. Send a modules equipped. Why can I not change this over? Alright, again, when status changes, what do they mean? I should be able to change weapons in here, can't I? Wow, okay, I cannot, apparently. This is very interesting. Okay, that's new. Sorry, we'll exit the lab real quick. Or is there some way that I can exit the lab right now? This is my storage box. I can literally use a storage box. So why am I unable to do this? Wow, this is the saddest thing I've ever seen. Okay. Sorry, guys. For the sake of this test, we will use the secret garden because it's a lot easier to show you guys. All right. Now, while we wait, I'll just say that, uh, okay, now we're back. It'll take us a moment to run back there, but here's the thing. When you have blood and iron equipped, one last thing to take into account is the fact that there's a 30% chance on a critical hit. So if you're not using a weapon with a very high critical hit rate, blood and iron is quite useless. You need a weapon with a high critical hit rate because every critical hit only has a 30% chance of generating the power of life. And then on top of that, you have to wait for the cooldown to disappear before you can uh, gain another power of life, right? So unless you've got a lot of cooldown reduction, this can be pretty slow going. I should have made sure I had another weapon for the... Uh, for the final test, but... Okay, never mind. If I have to do that again, then... Uh, I, I sure hope that this will not be that way. Please let me change this. Oh, I can change this now. Okay, I guess it was just a bug. All right. Grand. Let's go summon a creature. So, level 100. There we go. Apologies for the inconvenience on this one. Anyway, when it comes to Secret Garden and Blood and Iron, right? Secret Garden has a high critical hit chance. You should know this by now. Look, I managed to in one burst get a power of life, but I cannot immediately get another. I have to wait till the cooldown is up, and then I get another. Then look, while it's on cooldown, it doesn't matter how many crits I hit, I'll never get another. Alright? Even if I hit a crit, it, that crit may not trigger the blood and iron. See? It doesn't trigger the blood and iron effect. Not yet. Now it triggered. So, this is the problem with blood and iron. However, in the past, we had to put up with it because, again, it was, it was literally one of the only options we had. Now we've got mass sanctification. Blood and iron is like, I don't want to play with you anymore. Alright? So that's Blood and Iron being demonstrated right there. Last but not least is Predator Instinct. This one is pretty much used for gun glaze. Glaze that focus on their gun. Why? Because in your frenzied state, right, for your first skill, um, you will gain, you will gradually increase your firearm damage based on how long you have been firing for. Without Predator Instinct, <laughs> Excuse me. Glay gets a 15% firearm attack bonus and a 15% firearm explosive attack increase. All right. Incoming recovery decrease would be 50%. Receive damage increase would be 10%. Firearm penetration increase amount 51. This is standard. With Predator Instinct on, pay attention to how this changes. Look. This will now change to firearm attack increase level 1, 15%. Level 2 is 21%. Take note that this does not increase explosive attack damage anymore. I don't know if this is a bug, but 
it does not seem to apply to rocket launchers because rocket launchers specifically function off explosive attack. However, it will work for a good deal of other weapons, but not burst rifles. Okay, so now let's demonstrate this. We have the Enduring Legacy, where you'll be able to see this. So let's go into Frenzied State. As I fire, I gain Predator Instinct, and Predator Instinct can stack up twice. All right. So after firing for one second, I gain the first boost, and then after firing for another second, I gain the second boost. All right. That's, that's basically how it's supposed to go. But if I were to put on a burst rifle, say Secret Garden, okay, let's do that again. It doesn't matter even if I have um, the automatic fire accessibility option turned on, it will not trigger. It doesn't matter whether I click, tap, or anything else, it will not trigger. So Predator Instinct, take note, it does not work with burst fire rifles. If you are using a, just as an example, a Greg-based glay for your gun glay, um, just take note that this will not trigger for your Gregs, but if you switch over to like your Enduring Legacy, this will trigger. So for Gunglay, I still believe that this is the best possible Transcendent mods, but it does come with several limitations, so just be aware of that. Okay, it takes two seconds to get to its full um, potential, but once it does get to its full potential, it's pretty good, so I do I do genuinely uh, like it. So yeah, this is what I this is what I enjoy um, on Gunglay. So I don't mind Predator Instinct at all, but I feel that uh, it depending on depending on the type of weapon you're going to use, you're going to have to choose in accordance. All right, um, if you are primarily using burst fire or scout rifles, you may not want to have Predator Instinct. If your main method of dealing damage is Enduring Legacy, by all means, please have Predator Instinct. Okay? That about covers it, and that covers <coughs> all of her Transcendent Modules. So, thank you very much for hanging out with me today. I hope that has explained all of Glaze Transcendent Modules to you guys. I hope that uh, helps you guys decide on what you want to use. Um, before we go, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to register me as your favorite content creator, especially if you enjoy my content. Um, please allow me to also thank, number one, here are September's top supporters. Thank you to CG Mayhem, our top tipper. Uh, Sir Tommy Gunn as our top super chatter. Ted Wu, I done done it as our top super chatter as well. Uh, top super ch top channel membership gifter is uh, George Tishon with uh, five gifted memberships. And the other membership gifters are I done done it and Yo Slime Forever. Thank you guys so much. All right. We also have to thank our top tier channel members. So if they think that they can escape my thank yous, they are wrong. Here they are. Vegas Moxie, Arcane Silver, CG Mayhem, Death Dawning 982, Haza, Jose, uh, Princess Star, Track Hoodie. Thank you guys for the Plus Ultra channel membership. You guys are amazing. And thank you to Nisk, George Tishon, and VVS Fang as only fan level memberships. Thank you guys so much. All right. I'll see you guys in the next one. Y'all have a good time. Don't do anything weird and don't do anything weird with Glay. Okay? See y'all later. <laughs>